Hey folks, let's have some fun today doing some great free motion machine quilting on our domestic sewing machine. I'm gonna take that wonderful easiest log cabin quilt ever I've just made. I wanna teach you how to baste it onto a small table so you're prepared for free motion quilting. And then we're gonna start playing with some really cool decorative stitches. Are you ready? Let's get stitching. Well, well, welcome back everybody. My name is Rob Appel. I'm a quilt maker here at Stitch in Heaven in Quitman, Texas, and I'm super excited to teach you one of the strategies that many of us quilt makers that love to quilt our own quilts fall into, and that's getting all three layers, the backing, the quilt top, and the batting together for basting so that when then we can do our magic with the machine and the thread. A lot of us don't have a really large place to base, so I'd like to kind of teach you how I do basting for larger quilts in small areas, and then the free motion as well. So one of the things you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do before you even get started, measure your quilt top. Once you know how large your quilt top is, make sure you treat yourself to three to four inches on all sides, so basically six to eight inches longer and wider for your backing and batting than the quilt top, because the quilt top is gonna to move as we're machine quilting. Build your quilt backing, to the appropriate size, and that's where this video starts today. Now, I'm just gonna set the batting and the safety pins we'll use for basting down for a second. I want you to notice that I don't have the blue tape today. I really like to use these spring clamps because it's so much easier to adjust, and if my table is smaller than my quilt, it's going to be challenging to tape to anything because I don't have anything to tape to. So these clamps are a treat. You probably want to pick up some that are like three or four inches so you can baste to any size table. So I now need to set these down for a second, and we'll be right back with those. And the quilt top goes on last, so we'll just set that over here with our machine, ready to rock and roll. Now, you need to remember you're building your quilt now like we'll enjoy our quilts later. So our quilt backing, you're gonna take your print side and you're gonna put it down. Now, I want you to notice that my backing is much larger than my table. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk around my table to ensure that the overhang of the table and the fabric and everything is the same. So right now I can shift a few more inches over. And this backing just came out of my suitcase and even though I've pressed it, you still see some of these creases, but as I pull it tight, they'll go away and as we quilt, it certainly won't be a problem. So once my fabric is centered, now what I want to do is I want to take two clamps and I'm going to start on one of the short ends of my table. So I'm going to come on over here and I'm going to put a clamp to hold the edge of the fabric and then I'm going to slide my hand and pull it taut this way so there's no wrinkle and I'm going to put another clamp here. Now, I'm gonna come all the way to the other end of the table with two more clamps. And I'm gonna start by pulling the fabric down and taut and clamping it. And this is why I love the clamps, because I can really adjust if I need to. Now I'm gonna pull the fourth corner and clamp it. Now I have four clamps left. I wanna place them along the sides of the quilt backing as I work, even though there's a good probably 12 inches hanging off the table. We start by basting our quilts from the center out, so that's why having overhang on both sides of the table is not a problem right now. Once again, I'm going to pull tension and tension and come to the other side of my table and do the same. Now that I'm over here, I can pull down on the fabric and you might note all of a sudden, these wrinkles are starting to go away. If they don't completely go away, you can readjust the first ones you put in. So I've kind of secured this whole section now of the backing. Clamping again over here, and any other adjustments necessary as I work my way around the table. 
You probably don't need more clamps than this, but if you have them, you could use them. They're not going to hurt. Or if you have any spots that are really not behaving, you may want to iron it a little bit more. But please don't iron right onto a wooden table because the steam could affect the wooden table. Okay, just a quick little pointer. Now, we're going to take our batting. I prefer the Hobbs 80-20. 80% 80 cotton, 20% polyester, 1% uh, thread, I guess. I'm not sure <laughs> from before. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and gently start to lay out my batting over my quilt, making sure that it's laying in the same rectangular direction. And I can see that I've already needing to rotate. One of the tricks I'd like to offer about batting is I love to let my batting air out for a couple of days before I turn it into a quilt. So I'll put it over the bed, lay it over the back of the couch, maybe take it to the guest room or something and get it all dialed in so that the creases in the packaging and everything start to come out. And while we're talking about our batting, I'm just doing the same thing I was doing before. I'm walking around my table to make sure that the batting is going to be much larger than the backing. The only disadvantage to using these clamps is they're going to hold the fabric out a ways. So I don't want to pull on the batting because in the past I've accidentally caught the batting on a clamp here and it actually started to kind of snag. So if you need to make any adjusting, it's more, <laughs> more better. Did I just say that on camera? I think I did. I'm so sorry. It's more better to just go ahead and smooth from the center out here as you work through. And again, I'm just ensuring that I have way more batting than I do backing all the way around. This inch here, we're going to make sure it's accounted for before we put any staples in or pins in. I don't know why I said staples. Time for the quilt top. Once all of your batting is smooth and your thread picking is complete, go ahead and take your quilt top and start to lay it out as well. I'm going to try to keep the center of the quilt right down the center of the table to start. And this is a great quilt. If you haven't seen the tutorial for this, it's called the easiest log cabin ever. And it's really simple, fun and scrappy. I will teach you how to make both accurate and wonky log cabins in the video. If you haven't checked it out, please do. It's one of my favorites. And now as I walk around the table, Please note, remember, the backing is way down here. The batting is way there, right? Look at what we're looking at. So I know I'm confident that I've got enough space for my quilt in the center of the batting. And I'm just taking one last second to make sure that the quilt is basically centered to everything else we've done so far. I'm going to pet my quilt because I love it. I'm also smoothing out the wrinkles and getting things adjusted. From the center out, all of the work is done in this phase of your projects. The reason we do that, as I mentioned before, all of this fabric is going to settle into its seam allowances and its design work. So the quilt top is going to slightly grow into the rest of that backing and batting. Now, next thing, I love the curved safety pins. I bet you these are all still sealed up. So this will be fun. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a safety pin right in the dead center of the quilt, which is probably here. I kind of split my fabric open a little ways, kind of give it a little bit of tension. And I'm going to put a safety pin and I could actually feel it hit the table and come back up through all three layers. Okay. Now, I love you all out there and I really want you to buy a lot of safety pins. But I've seen many of your projects at this phase and they're loaded with safety pins. Folks, you only need a Shaka's distance from your safety pin to your next safety pin. And I'm going to strongly encourage you to put them in a grid, especially for the style of quilting we're going to do with this quilt, which is all over the place with all kinds of different free motion motifs, meaning I can't account for when the pins are going to show up. So now I want to build a system for my pins, a Shaka's distance, and I'm going to run the long portion of the quilt first. So now I come over here, pin. Close your pins up so you don't get poked. Smooth all the way to the edge. Shaka and pin. 
Folks, if you were doing this with an applique project that was raw edge, you don't really want to pin right on the applique edge. So you can pin near the edge as needed. As you smooth, find your shaka, and close your pins up. Now, I really want you to get a pin within the last few inches towards the edge. This will help us keep from getting the backing caught underneath while we're not paying attention because we're so focused on the quilting. So this shaka distance is going to work that way. So I've run from center one direction. Now I'm going to go from center the other direction. Now once I've completed the long side of the quilt, I'm going to start from the center pin and do the exact same thing on the short sides of the quilt, running perpendicular. Another shaka towards me, and another one towards me, and that's going to land me right on the end of the table. Table's not so big that I can't reach to the other side, so I'm just going to catch it here. But when I'm working in the other studio out in California, you've seen that table is wider, so I normally will walk around that one just so that it's easy and convenient. The last thing you want to do is get your neck, shoulders, or back sore before you start machine quilting. Now, folks, let's check this out. You've got the grid now of pins running vertically and horizontally. Find the union between the two pins and place another pin there and only there. So, working in a grid still, I'm going to put a pin here, from center, center to here, right, center to here, See how it's all formulated? And now I can kind of expect where my pins are going to end up throughout the whole project so I don't accidentally run the machine over a pin while stitching backwards, which we will be doing here in a moment. Like I said, as soon as I have all of these pins in here, I will show you one of my favorite stitching motifs for free motion. And as I'm finishing out this quarter, I'll just remind you that the rest of the top will be done the same. So as I blast through that to get to the next phase, I do want to show you how to handle these edges before we can quilt. I will be right back. Okay, so now as I have my last safety pin in the field on the top of the quilt, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to actually pull the clamps out. We have enough of it secured at this point that we can really go ahead and pull clamps. and then shift the quilt to one side to go ahead and get the pins all the way out to the edge. Let me show you this trick, folks. Just in case I'm worried about where my edge is going to fall, now that the clamps are out, I can get a real true read. So as I roll my batting up, you can see that I've got space below. So I know when that comes up, that'll be just enough so before we go any further, I've got to check the other side because if I wasn't accurate, I would need to stop now because all of these pins would be redone. Perfect. Okay, we can move on. So in that case, like I said, I'm going to move the quilt towards me like yay. And I don't have to do much, but I am going to take a moment and clamp the whole top with just two clamps here and then smooth if the quilt was much larger, I would take the time to really secure the backing again, making sure that that backing is really nice and taut. But as I do my free motion machine quilting, I actually release the safety pins sooner as I get closer to the edge because of some of that ripple I was talking about happening. So really the outer edge pins are just to keep the back of your quilt from rolling under in the project. So I can just throw a pin out here to hold it. Maybe just another one down a ways. Well, those ones are stuck together. There we go. I think my kids have been in my safety pins again. They love sticking them together. And we're back. I want to take a couple moments before we actually start the stitching. I forgot to mention a few other supplies you probably are going to want. They are optional, but they certainly help. 
I've added an extra table around my sewing machine so that my hands can be a little bit wider and I have a little bit more space around the base of the quilt to just give me some stability. The Sew Steady tables are available for any size sewing machine. They just need to be custom ordered and we'll be happy to do that for you here at Stitch in Heaven. This particular table is the one that's made for my handy quilter, Stitch 510, and I absolutely love it. And I'm also gonna use these Machine Gears gloves and I don't really believe we should ever dive into any quilt project without a small test sample in our supply. Now yesterday I was playing with a different color thread, so I do apologize. I've got a dark purple sandwich and some dark purple thread, but I'm just gonna do a second to test to make sure that all my tension is right, my machine sounds good, I've cleaned it, I've oiled it, I've got a fresh needle in it. But we're also going to do what I'm going to call a little bit of a circle practice drill today. We've been doing a lot of straight line around here lately, so let's get into some curves. Let's make our curves really nice. So again, free motion comes from straight stitching and or curve stitching. I'm going to drop my needle down, I'm going to pick my needle up to grab my bobbin thread. I am ready to go ahead and practice my start by locking that down. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just see how the motion's feeling in my curves for a little bit. Just some good old sloppy free motion at first. You probably can't even see the stitches. But once I start to feel a little bit more dialed in, what I wanna teach you is a big circle into a little circle drill. So let's stop for a second. Remember, my quilting teacher was Mr. Miyagi. Remember, big circle, little circle. Big circle, little circle in both hands. So what I want you to be able to do is start to practice flowing, and your circles won't be perfect. But remember, a circle with only four stitch points is considered a square. So I want you to add smaller stitches as you go around and just practice flowing all the way through your circle into another one of the opposite direction. Let me see if I can demonstrate. Oh, I want to put my needle down in case I need to stop. So now as I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to run my machine about half speed. I'm going to do a big circle and try to come to that point. I'm going to follow my thread around. And now I'm going to do a little circle in the opposite direction. Keep heading straight into a big circle or a square, <laughs> a little circle. And there's something we need to point out. Most important to any free motion machine quilting is the quilt is going to stay in the same direction. The movements are like this. The quilt is not being moved like this. I never want you to try to rotate the fabric unless the machine is completely stopped and the needle is down and that would only be if you're in a bad spot. So again, I've rotated it successfully now. I do not want you trying to quilt and rotate it like this. You'll never get anywhere. It's the worst. You're going to go ahead and just do your circles by keeping your north pointing north. And once you start to practice your circles and feel comfortable with your circles, look what we can do with them on a real quilt. I just cut my thread, which was probably kind of foolish because it's going to leave my bobbin tail really short. So normally when I'm free motion quilting, I generally pull the thread up. I, I just was thinking patchwork at the moment. So I did hit my thread cutter. Let's see how we survive. I'm gonna bring the quilt all the way back to the center square. Remember, when we're quilting or basting or any, it starts from the middle and radiates out in all directions. So I'm also gonna take a moment and kind of just fluff the quilt. I wanna get all the weight off. I wanna be comfortable. I want my shoulders to be loose, my arms to be square to the machine. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a spot away from a safety pin, okay? In all of these wonderful colors, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can bring that bobbin thread up by going needle down, needle up, lift my presser foot up here. Nope, we can't see it. So now the other trick is put it in a seam, put about five stitches in place and that'll hold it. And then go ahead and go to needle down. And now we're going to go ahead and just start flowing with some of those circles. You notice I also started on my quilt in the purple because when I and first getting started on any project, I want to just see how I'm doing. So I match my threads to the area that I'm going to be quilting in. And then I start doing the quilting as I feel comfortable. And over time, we'll start to move over into some other areas. Oh, look at that. There's circles in that area. So I could either try to follow those circles and create motif that way. There's another circle there. I can come over here to this circle. I can come up here to this circle. 
oh my goodness, folks, look what else has happened. Now, I might be a little warm in here, but my hair didn't get curled or fried. I was not hit by lightning. Look at that. I've crossed my threads and nothing bad has happened to me yet. Now, we might find the quilt police knocking on the door soon. Whoop, I'll get that. Kidding. But really, I want to show you folks, whatever you do, just do it consistent, even if it's crossing over your threads. Of course, what I like to do with my swirls is come in here sometimes and instead of doing a complete circle, I'm going to touch a line and come back touch a line and come back, go on to another design, touch a line and come back, touch a line and come back and keep playing with this. This is a really fun design and it's really simple and it actually makes it easier because you don't have to do a perfect circle. You can change directions to fill in space as necessary. You can also take this kind of a design and you can turn it into more of a feather stem or an arcing kind of curly cue. You can come off the back end of them and do curly cues. There's all kinds of fun stuff. You can now address that with a little bit more curl and nothing has really changed in my motion. You notice the speed of the machine is still running. I'm not looking up anymore, of course, to see if you all are laughing at my jokes, but I know, we're just cruising along. And anytime I need to stop or recalibrate, of course you can do it in a seam, you can do it in the light color, or if your needle's in the down position, you can really just drop your needle and go on. You might need to answer the phone, answer the door, <laughs> grab a glass of water, turn on the AC, whatever is going on, but always know a really good safe moment where you can stop the machine in case your hands are getting too far away from where you're supposed to be, you're just not getting comfortable because that's the last strategy I'd like to share with you all today. Please do not try to do any free motion quilting if your neck or your shoulders or your elbows start to get tight. You are allowed to machine quilt until you start to feel fatigued. But if you start to feel fatigued, the best thing you can do is stop for the rest of the day and come back to it the following day. And as a matter of fact, if you treat it like an exercise program and maybe you do 30 minutes of machine quilting on Monday and 35 minutes on Tuesday and 40 minutes on Wednesday and take Thursday off and come back to it Friday, you do that for a few weeks, you'll notice you can actually machine quilt for hours and hours, but you're retraining the muscles in your body. Free motion machine quilting is actually coming out of my elbows and my shoulders, not out of my wrists. So I'm trying to teach my big motor muscles to do small movements. And so it just takes a little bit of time and a lot of practice to get to the point where you're comfortable with doing just about anything. My strategy behind that is one motif at a time until I feel comfortable and then I start to add new motifs into my library and eventually I've got several designs I can lay down in just about any spot on a quilt. I would like to keep doing more different motifs actually on this quilt with all of you because it's a great way to get my quilt done and enjoy spending time with you out there as quilt makers. Will you let me know in the comments below the next style motif you would like to see done on this easiest log cabin ever, as well as let me know how your machine quilting is going in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and we will see you real soon with another great video. Until then, please stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.